A study was conducted to determine the factor that reduces LDL cholesterol the most, medication, diet, or exercise. 27 patients at a hospital with comparable levels of LDL cholesterol are randomly assigned to each treatment group. After eight weeks, the drop in LDL cholesterol for each patient was measured. Fill in the missing parts of the ANOVA table, answer the set of questions that follow, and use a 5% significance level to test the claim that all three of the treatments produce the same drop in LDL cholesterol. Okay, so they've already entered this data into SPSS and produced an ANOVA table. It's our job to complete that ANOVA table, so let's go do that. Okay, so the first thing we see is that we're missing the treatment sum of squares, but they do give us the total sum of squares and the error sum of squares. So remember, the relationship is that the treatment plus the error sum of squares is equal to the total sum of squares. So if you have the total, you can always take away the error sum of squares, and it'll give you the treatment sum of squares. And likewise, if you had the treatment sum of squares and you subtracted that from the total sum of squares, you'd be left with the error sum of squares. So all we have to do is subtract the error sum of squares from the total sum of squares. So we'll simply do... 5,028.667 minus 1,732.444. And we have our answer 3,296.223. So 3,296. Okay, now we need to work on the degrees of freedom. So we have the total degrees of freedom, but we're missing both the treatment and the error degrees of freedom. But if we scroll back up, we can see the treatment degrees of freedom is very easy to come by. We had three treatments. We had medication, diet, and exercise. So our number of treatments is three. The degrees of freedom then for treatments is just three minus one. You take one away from the number of treatments you have. So we'll end up with two for the degrees of freedom for treatment. So the treatment degrees of freedom again is three minus one or two. Now remember that the treatment degrees of freedom plus the error degrees of freedom would have to add up to the total degrees of freedom. So 2 plus what, right? So in other words, we're asking, what does this have to be? 2 plus what number gives you 26? Well, the answer, of course, is 24. 2 plus 24 gives us 26. So again, if you have the total degrees of freedom and one of these other two here, you can simply subtract the one you have from the total, and you'll have the leftover amount that you need for the missing degrees of freedom. Okay, now we have to derive the mean squares. In order to do that, we're simply going to divide the degrees of freedom into the sum of squares, and we'll get the mean square. Okay, so let's do that. So we have the 3296.223 already in our calculator. We're just going to divide that by 2, by its degrees of freedom, in other words. And we get the answer 1,648.1115. Okay, so now we'll do the same for error. We're going to divide 24 into 1,732.44. So 1,732.44 divided by 24. We get the answer 72.185. Okay, so that's our mean square for treatment or our mean square for error. Now, you can check this to make sure you did everything correctly. We want to make sure that the mean square for error, when it's divided into the mean square for treatment, it ends up giving us 22.832. Let's check that quickly. So if we had 1648.1115 divided by the number that we just found, 72.185, we should get 22.832, and we do. So that means we've done it correctly. Okay, so the first step is done. We've completed the ANOVA table. Now let's take a look at the answer for the question, what is the null hypothesis for this particular ANOVA procedure? Well, there are three treatment means, right? The three treatment means are going to be connected to our treatments here, medication, diet, and exercise. So the null hypothesis is simply going to be that the mean for medication is equal to the mean for diet is equal to the mean for exercise. So the answer for this first question, part A, is simply that the mean for medication will be equal to the mean for diet will be equal to the mean for exercise. So remember, the null hypothesis always states that the three or four or five means, however many treatments you have, are all equal to one another. In this case, we're saying these three treatment means are all equal to one another. All right, so part B says, what's the p-value for the test? So in the SPS output, they give you the p-value in the location where it says sig for significance level. So they're talking about the observed significance level, which is another name for the p-value. So let's go ahead and look at that. You can see the significance level is given as 0.000. .000. In other words, it's very small. So for our p-value, we're going to say that the p-value is equal to 0 0.000. And so in part C, they say, what's the decision regarding the null hypothesis? Well, since that p-value is so small and smaller than any alpha we would normally use, we should say that we'll reject the null hypothesis. 
So because the p-value is less than alpha, we're going to say that we reject the null hypothesis. So again, because the p-value is less than alpha, we're going to conclude that we should reject the null hypothesis. All right, let's take a look at part D. It says, based on the results of this experiment, are all of these treatments equally effective at reducing LDL cholesterol? Well, again, we rejected the null hypothesis, right? So what are we doing? We're saying that this statement above, this null hypothesis here, should be rejected. In other words, we don't believe it's true. In other words, the evidence makes it seem like that is not true. And if that's not true, then it is not true that all the treatments are equally effective, right? Because if they were equally effective, then the null hypothesis would not have been rejected, right? Because the null hypothesis is saying they're all equally effective, right? They're all equal one another, but we just rejected that. Okay, let's take a look at part E then. The last part of the problem, it says, based on the results of this experiment, is it possible to determine if there is a significant difference between the average reduction in LDL cholesterol achieved through the use of medication and the reduction achieved by exercise? So what they're doing here is asking us about two of the means specifically. They want us to compare the amount that's achieved using medication and the amount that's achieved by exercise. Now, the thing about this is normally you're not able to distinguish between the, the three treatment means, right? Typically, in order to do that, we have to go on and do something called a multiple comparison procedure, which you'll learn in the next section, right? So at this point, typically we'd say, all we can say is that all the treatment means are not equal to one another. However, sometimes you can use some reasoning based on the number of means that are there and sort of the results you can see from the table of original data. So let's go take a look at the original data and see if we can make any sense of it. Let's take a look. Okay, so what I've done is just transferred the medication diet and exercise columns, right, those measurements into Excel so I could sum the values very quickly, right? So with the sums here at the bottom, I can see that medication had a sum of 250, diet 440, and exercise 213. Now, the logic of what they asked us is basically they're trying to say, can we tell the difference between medication and exercise? Well, you know, we rejected the null hypothesis, which said that each of these three were equal to one another. So we know they're not all equal to one another, but we generally can't tell which ones differ from each other significantly. However, you could probably reason that, well, if we were able to reject the null hypothesis, they're not all the same. And certainly, if they're not all the same, then it would have to mean that the smallest total would have to be different from the largest total. Because if those two things aren't different from each other significantly, then how could any of them be different from each other significantly, right? So the logic is that this one must be different from this one, probably if we rejected the null hypothesis. Now, that may be true, but we can't say for sure that this value is different from this value because medication and exercise are not those two extremes. You know, exercise seems to have the smallest reduction in LDL values, but medication is second in the list, and there may not be a difference between these two. At least there may not be a significant difference. We can see that one had a reduction of 213. You know, the sum of the reductions is 213. We can see that this one had a sum of 250, but those are pretty close to one another. They may not actually be statistically different from one another. Probably since we rejected the null hypothesis, we can say that diet is different from exercise because those are the two extreme ends. We have the smallest compared to the largest. However, we don't know that, for example, medication and diet are different from one another either because those are not the two extremes, right? So we would need a multiple comparison procedure to be able to tell the difference between these means. We'd have to compare them one by one, create confidence intervals, and see if, in fact, there is a true difference between them separately. That's what the material in section 10.2 will teach us. But for now, we cannot conclude that there's a significant difference between the medication treatment and the exercise treatment. We'll have to wait till we learn the next section's material before we can answer a question like Part E.